Let's talk about Battle for Bikini Bottom. No, not that Battle for Bikini Bottom. Not that one either. Okay, now you're just being silly. That's right, we're going to talk about one of the least discussed renditions of Battle for Bikini Bottom, the AWE PC version. AWE Productions Inc. contributed a lot to the early Spongebob video games. By 2003, they had created two Spongebob games of their own for the PC along with THQ. These were Employee of the Month and Operation Krabby Patty, both original titles. However, with the release of Revenge of the Flying Dutchman in 2002, Spongebob made his break into the home console gaming scene. The following year, he would return to the GameCube and PS2, also Xbox, with another title, Battle for Bikini Bottom. What can be said about Battle for Bikini Bottom? It's a fantastic game loaded with nostalgic value. It has its place in the fondest memories of many Spongebob fans. However, people don't often talk about AWE's PC rendition. Likewise, people don't often talk about the PC versions of the movie or Lights, Camera, Pants either, but we'll get to those in later videos. This isn't because the game is bad or anything, it's just that the console version was so good and had such mass appeal, nobody ever cared to look into its alternatives. As we go through this game, I'll avoid comparing it to its console counterpart and treat it as an individual work of its own. I may, however, compare it to AWE's earlier installments to see if they've improved or if this was a step down from Employee of the Month. Without further ado, I give you Battle for Bikini Bottom. Also, forewarning, some of the graphics don't always load on my computer, probably because of how old the game is, so if some of the characters look like they crawled out of the deepest pits of hell, that's probably why. To start off, AWE changed its opening from Plankton looking at scandalous pictures of Sandy to Spongebob being a valley girl. Whatever. After some nostalgic logos, we see Plankton in an intro very similar to how Corporation Krabby Patty started. Instead of random ants with no backstory whatsoever, Plankton has used his genius mind to construct an army of robots. It's time to begin the battle for Bikini Bottom! Hey, he said it! A robot throws paper at him, which apparently indicates they're rebelling, then they insult him and walk out to terrorize the city of Bikini Bottom. One of them even calls him a sea ant as an insult. They deserve to be insulted, seeing as they attack their own allies for no reason. Plankton finds out that he switched the obey switch to off, though I'm not sure why an evil genius would even build that option to begin with. Spongebob and Patrick are playing with robots, minus the racehorses, and Spongebob wishes robots were real. They gather the robots and make a wish on a falling clam, which is kind of morbid when you consider that is a living creature burning to death and plummeting to the ground. The next day, Plankton's robots attack, and they even kill the parasol lady from Employee of the Month. Didn't expect there to be character deaths in AWE lore. Then... <laughs> I didn't edit that. That's literally how abruptly the intro ends and goes into the title screen. Right out of the gate, this game feels more like Operation Krabby Patty than Employee of the Month, considering how fast-paced the intro is and how... strange some of the dialogue is. It also tries out the same style as Operation Krabby Patty by being a series of mini-games with an overarching story. As a kid, I found this disappointing because I really liked the style of Employee of the Month and I wanted to see AWE continue it. Unlike Operation Krabby Patty, there's actual variety to the mini-games rather than just repeating the same few ones twice. Let's see how they hold up. You have your choice of five key locations from the console game for where to begin. Downtown Bikini Bottom, the Mermelair, the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard, the Kelp Forest, and the Chum Bucket. You can go in any order, so let's look at them in the order they're unlocked in the console game. Starting with Downtown Bikini Bottom, we learn the format for how every location works. We start with a newscast from a realistic fish head that tells us what our mission is for the level. Robots have stolen props from a magic shop and we need to find them throughout every stage. I think there are more pressing matters at hand, but okay. SpongeBob can't seem to find Patrick, so he sets out to find him. In the first stage, robots are driving cars and you have to navigate the streets to avoid them. Also, the boat you cleaned in Employee of the Month is there. That teenager really wants you to pay for those urchin chips. As you've probably noticed, this game borrows a lot of assets from Employee of the Month in Operation Krabby Patty. Even the music is exactly the same. AWE was a small company with an even smaller budget, so don't be too hard on them. Throughout the stage, you have to find the stolen magic shop items for a later stage. This SpongeBob version of Frogger is surprisingly challenging and kind of fun to play. The power-ups are the same across every level. An extra life, invincibility, the ability to slow the enemies down, the ability to freeze enemies, which can be a real problem if they're blocking where you need to go, and bonus points. Unless you're just playing for a high score, ignore the bonus points if you see them. They aren't worth risking your life over. 
After this stage, SpongeBob forgets what he was doing and needs to play a memory game with sewer covers to remember. It's pretty clever, even if it is simple. Memory games are a staple in every early 2000s children's game. SpongeBob finds Patrick in a cage in a game show-like area. Patrick thinks SpongeBob is in the cage instead of him, which I found annoying as a kid. You have to answer trivia questions to get Patrick out, and while they're typically questions from the show to test your loyalty to SpongeBob, some of them are completely random. Thankfully, answers vanish over time to make your choice easier. Once Patrick is out of the cage, he becomes his super alter ego, the Pink Menace, to go fight the robots. This was long before Nighty Nightmare, so Starfish Man wasn't his super persona quite yet. Also, isn't menace kind of an antagonizing term? I know it was said in the show, but you're a superhero, not a supervillain. Patrick's stage entails throwing soda cans at robots and avoiding obstacles. Again, pretty challenging and fun. If you run out of cans, you can steal one from a guy with a lot of relatives in Rock Bottom. Once you have all the props from the magic shop, you play a stage where you return them to where they belong. It's simple, but these were some of my favorite stages to play when I was young. Also, why is there a woman trapped in a glass box? She's gonna die in there. Afterwards, Patrick has a bowling match to attend to, so he and SpongeBob take a break from robot fighting to bowl. Patrick tells SpongeBob to be the ball, and he takes it a little too literally. The stage goes on forever until you decide to quit, so congratulations, you reached the end of the level. While all the mini-games are different for every level, it should be noted they follow the same pattern. A SpongeBob platformer, a puzzle, trivia, a game with one of SpongeBob's friends, a game where you use the items you found, and a bonus stage that has no conclusion. Formulaic, but it still allows for creativity with the different locations. However, I never liked that the individual levels didn't have endings. At the very least, give us a cutscene of Spongebob liberating downtown Bikini Bottom or something. Just some sort of closure. Not everything has to end like the game's intro. Moving on to the Mermelair, the fish head tells us that Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy have misplaced their super gadgets. Spongebob heads to the Mermelair to get their help with fighting the robots. The first stage is... aggravating, to say the least. Easily one of my least favorites as a kid. You can only jump by clicking the mouse button, and you have to time your moves perfectly or you fall to your death. You have to collect the lost items on each platform, but they can be really tricky to land on. It also gets annoying just having to sit and wait for moving platforms to go where you want them to be. It's easier to play as an adult, but it resulted in tons of childhood frustration. SpongeBob reaches the Mermelair security system disguised as a bunch of stalagmites, and you have to use arrows to line them up in a coherent order. Not much else to say. SpongeBob finds Squidward in a cage and begins the trivia match. Squidward is a weird choice for this level because I don't think he's ever had any major interactions with Mermaid Man and Barkle Boy, but AWE basically exists in its own universe. Squidward runs off and begins a stage somehow even more annoying than the Cave Jumper one. You have to climb ropes and move across them while avoiding robots that are also climbing the ropes. Your moves have to be oddly precise, and if you're too close to the bottom, Squidward will just outright refuse to move, even if the timing is perfect. You are truly a loser. There's also one instance where you have to climb down a series of ropes to get one of the lost items, then climb all the way back up and move to the complete opposite side of the map to repeat the same process. Creative idea, but annoying in execution. When Squidward reaches the bottom, he reunites with Spongebob and they meet Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. However, the superheroes need you to put their gadgets back on their infamous wall. This is a really cool stage where you have to listen to the sound effects on each panel and match them with the sounds each of their gadgets make. It's a major breath of fresh air after the two most frustrating stages in the game. Afterwards, Murray Man and Barnacle Boy decide to have a dance party, leading to a memory-based dance stage that never ends until you lose. Just a personal thing, but I suck at these kind of games, so it just made me angry when I was younger. The Mermelair is probably the most infuriating level for children, and I still struggle to play through some of it as an adult. I really wish it had a proper ending so I could feel like it was all worth it. Moving on to the Kelp Forest, which seems to be a prime location in AWE games. Surprised they didn't include Rock Bottom in this one. A cargo plane has spiraled out of control and dropped a ton of supplies into the forest below it. Seems like a nice little nod to the show. SpongeBob falls into the forest and loses his clothes, so he makes a leotard out of wild cat fur. In case you're wondering how he gets the cat fur. <laughs> Jesus Christ, AWE, did he just murder that thing? It's so vague, you can't even tell what's happening. I didn't even know wild cats existed in the undersea world, especially since snails are supposed to be their fish equivalent. 
This horrified me as a small child, considering SpongeBob may have possibly ripped a live kitty cat to shreds. In all likelihood, he likely just ripped the fur off a leopard or cheetah, but if that's the case, SpongeBob's a frickin' badass. How do you do that without being mauled to death? The first stage is a rope swing mission similar to Jungle Hunt. It's alright, but it's hard to tell just how much space you need between yourself and the robots trying to eat you from below. This one may require a few more replays than the other stages because it's actually kinda hard to collect some of the objects. Come on, I died to the restart screen? After the stage, Spongebob hears Gary giving a pain meow, probably because someone ripped his cheetah fur off, so you have to put rafts in order for Spongebob to cross a series of rivers. I honestly love stages like this, so I personally had some fun with this one. Afterwards, you find Gary in a cage and play the trivia game. The questions here are actually kinda messed up. First of all, Gary's food dish isn't purple, it's green. Second of all, how is anyone supposed to know how Spongebob first got Gary? Where was that even confirmed? In all fairness, Gary's food bowl was purple in the opening cutscene, so I guess it's true in the AWE-verse. But most of these questions are from the show, so it's just a bad question. After saving Gary, he goes off on his own and flies through the forest on a propeller cap. The mission is just flying through the forest and avoiding robots. A similar minigame would be present in the AWE Spongebob movie game. It's okay, but it can be hard to tell what you can fly through or not. Meanwhile, Spongebob loses his clothes again and has to play a dress-up game with the items he found. You have to match the items to create outfits, which is pretty fun in concept, but I wish the stage allowed you to create unique outfits by combining the wrong items. Afterwards, Gary returns and appears to be hungry, so you play an endless game of Snake with him to get food. That's a wrap on the Kelp Forest, an overall pretty decent level. Let's move on to the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. In this storyline, robots have robbed a bank and are keeping stolen treasures in the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. I just want to point out how the Flying Dutchman has been present in every AWE game so far, but he's never really been utilized. They must have really liked him as a character to shoehorn him in as much as they did. He doesn't even appear in this game, despite having a whole stage dedicated to him. The same thing happened in Employee of the Month in Operation Krabby Patty, though he briefly appeared in an Operation Krabby Patty stage and didn't do anything. They really just included him for the sake of his name. SpongeBob overhears Mr. Krabs trying to steal the stolen money from the robots, and he goes to find him. The first stage is one of my favorites. You have a sword, and you go around trying to find colored flags to bring them to their respective locations. You can fight the robots protecting the flags with your sword. I recommend playing this level right after the Kelp Forest, because that level ends with Spongebob in his pirate gear, so it leads right into this one seamlessly. I should also mention this was the first stage I played when I first got the game, so I thought the whole rest of the game would be like this. I was kind of taken by surprise when I learned this wasn't the case. There's no story reason for the second stage, you just have to push boxes into a hole, pretty simple. You find Mr. Krabs in a cage and answer some trivia questions. Again, not all of the questions are really predictable with this one. Wait a minute. Communism? Communism is one of the possible answers for Mr. Krabs' arch enemy! I know that's not the right answer, but somehow I feel it's true. I can't believe there exists a Spongebob video game that references communism. I thought the Doobie Brothers reference in Employee of the Month was bold, but oh my god. The next stage is really fun, but really hard for younger players. You go around as Mr. Krabs collecting gold and bringing it to barrels. You have to fight robots to get the lost items, and you engage in a boxing match in a sort of fighting game format. It's hard, but it sure is fun. They put a lot of effort into this particular level. Afterwards, you have to balance all the gold on a scale by evaluating how much weight goes on which side. This was really, really hard for me to figure out as a kid. As an adult, I finished it in under a minute. Finally, in our endless stage, apparently people are being forced to walk the plank for some reason and you have to catch them in a boat. Who are these people? No idea. This stage kinda comes out of nowhere and really just acts as a bonus round. Overall, the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard is a pretty good level and probably my personal favorite. Now it's on to the Chum Bucket, the final destination. Apparently, the robots have broken Plankton's contraption and he needs help fixing it. SpongeBob heads into the Chum Bucket and finds the robots are coming from inside. In the first stage, you're in an overhead view and you have to find keys to unlock doors that match their colors. It's pretty neat, but I still prefer the Capture of the Flag stage, which is kind of similar. SpongeBob then hears Sandy being overwhelmed by robots and he goes to help her, but he needs to get past this weird security system. You have to flip switches in a certain order to get the mechanical arms to move. 
It's really hard to describe. You just kind of figure it out as you go. To be perfectly honest, I never fully understood this stage. I just kind of wung it every time I got to it. It's just a lot of pattern guessing and trying things until something works. It's annoying and can take a really long time. They were probably out of unique puzzle ideas by now. Anyway, Sandy's in a cage and you have to let her out with trivia. Then you play as Sandy and have to draw lassos around robots. It's kind of like Pokemon Ranger, except not at all. It can be a little challenging when they start coming from all sides, but it's a decent stage. Next, you have to fix Plankton's contraption by putting all the items in the right spot. Also, get a load of this dialogue. Just too big, it's too much! Don't worry, SpongeBob. Size doesn't matter. <laughs> How the hell did they get away with that? As a kid, I was confused as hell and did not understand this scene at all. Maybe that's for the best. The stage itself is fine. It's basically mousetrap and you get to see it all work in the end. You can figure out what you need by watching the machine fail without it. It's pretty cool, but it's hard to focus on while I'm so baffled by the blatant sex joke they just made. Lastly, you play whack-a-mole with robots. It never ends. The game ends with SpongeBob and Patrick meeting RoboPlankton, not the same one from the console game. It turns out that literally all Plankton needed to do was turn the obey switch on. There is literally no reason given for why he didn't. He acknowledges this is the only way left to stop the robots, but doesn't explain why he hasn't done it. Did I mention this was written by the same people who wrote Operation Krabby Patty? At least if he just said, I forgot, it would have been some semblance of a reason. Patrick breaks the machine and the robots die, saving the day. You know what this means, right? This game actually kinda has a more conclusive ending than the console version. I know I said I wouldn't compare them, but I'm making an exception because wow, I did not expect that. Good job, AWE. So, how does Battle for Bikini Bottom on the PC hold up? It's decent. While I hated it as a kid, I have to admit it kinda aged like wine. Not necessarily the finest wine from Italy, but still that store-bought brand you kinda like and you get it often. Still pretty good. It's not bad but maybe it would have made for a better follow-up to Operation Krabby Patty rather than Employee of the Month. To describe its weaknesses, the story and dialogue are a little wonky. The difficulty is inconsistent, and the lack of closure really bugs me. Ironically, I think the lack of a proper ending for each individual level is what bothers me the most. I kept playing over and over again thinking I was missing something, but I suppose they just didn't have the budget to make ending cutscenes for every location. Most of the stages are fun and provide a reasonable challenge, but a lot of them rely on patience rather than consistent action. For the game's strengths, it is definitely an improvement from Operation Krabby Patty. The variety is good, the use of characters in the universe is much better, and it manages to keep a consistent formula while still shaking things up just enough. Like I said, most of the minigames are pretty fun, too. As a kid, I didn't like this game because I much preferred the style of Employee of the Month. I felt it allowed you to navigate and interact with the Spongebob universe a lot more, so it disappointed me to see this was just a series of mini-games. AWE's next installment, The Movie, would fully embrace the point-and-click style from Employee of the Month, while Lights, Camera, Pants would combine both the point-and-click and, and mini-game formats. Then there's the other one. From the three games so far, I'd squeeze this one right in the middle of Operation Krabby Patty and Employee of the Month. I enjoyed it, and it's a fun ride through nostalgia, but I do acknowledge it isn't for everyone. A good addition to your collection if you're an avid Spongebob gamer, but it's no Resident Evil 4. Just another fine game to come out of AWE's catalog. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next memory.